right, this is the configuration that we had it in when we were drilling out the blanks. So we'll go through and remove all of this. Same way that we put it on, just use your 5 30 seconds and do it. Pull it off and then take out your, your drill. I like to take this time to go through and adjust the eccentric bearing, make sure that it is running parallel. So with that, slide the headstock forward. So we'll start off, we'll put this guy on here. Doesn't need to be tightened down for right now, but we can just for the heck of it. And then put the live center in. Get this as close as we can, lock it down, and then we'll match the two points up to each other. And you see right now, they're going right by each other. So that means that the eccentric bearing needs to be adjusted. So we'll lock the quill in place, and then we'll rotate this to dead center. There we go. Now we're point to point. So now you know that your headstock is in line with the tailstock. Next we'll install the pin mandrel that we already set up. Slides right on here, tighten it down. I like to move the headstock just a little bit closer to the tailstock. Tighten that down and then advance the quill so that the pin mandrel meets up with the live center. And then tighten it down. You can rotate it, make sure it rotates freely. It does. And now we'll install the tool rest. These are the components to the tool rest for the shopsmith. Um, this is the tool rest post. Uh, the tool rest arm just slides into it and it'll lock down. And then the actual tool rest goes right here. So now the tool rest assembly goes in here, lower it down. You can lock it down for now, move it over, and then start adjusting. Once you have your tool rest where you want it, you just lock everything into place. So right there I just locked the actual tool rest in place, and now I'm locking the tool rest arm into place on the tool rest post. And now all I have to do is adjust the height up and down. There we go, and we'll lock it in place and lock the carriage in place as well. All right, so there are many different kind of lathe tools that you can use. Um, many for doing the pens, they prefer a pen lathe set. Um, I think they're a little bit small. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them, unless you're doing minute detail work, and then they come in great. This is a carbide tool um, that I had made. They're fantastic. They can uh, chew away at the blank very quickly, but when you're working on pens that are really thin, they can be so sharp that they'll actually catch on some of the natural parts of the blank and just blow it apart. And they'll take it right off of the pen tube, and then you've got to essentially start all over again. I like good old fashioned. Um, lathe tools. I sharpen them by hand. I use a file in sandpaper. I don't use a diamond blade or anything like that. The key to doing any kind of lathe work is make sure you have sharp lathe tools. Uh, for the majority of this I'm going to use a roughing gouge. It's actually one of my favorites to use. It's easy to control um, and it just works really well with this particular machine. Alright, so we're ready to start. So step one to this will be rounding off all the square edges. This is the part where it's going to kind of jump around, it's going to be noisy, um, but it's essentially what you have to do first. So with this we can see that we're rounded for the most part We've got a little bit of a flat edge right here still. It just tells me that it wasn't perfectly centered when I drilled it. That's fine. Uh, just going to go through it, round it a little bit more. Still have just a hair more. 
There we go. So now the blank is completely round. Now what I typically like to do is I will shape down to the bushings right here so I know, make sure that the middle doesn't go down too far and that'll kind of be my guide. For this particular pen, um, we're looking for completely straight all the way across and then um, so there doesn't need to be any kind of taper or any intricate shape to it. But you know, it's your pen you can put any kind of shape into it um, you want. With this particular one, it's considered an executive pen. Um, I like a nice smooth shaft with it. So that's just what I personally recommend. Since everything is rounded, we can actually speed up the lathe a little bit, uh, which will make this process go a little bit faster. Um, when it comes to turning pens, don't rush. You rush, you'll dig your tool too far in and the blank will just fly off. So uh, take your time with this. Now with this, you'll notice that I kept it a little proud of the bushing. The reason being is because we're going to sand this in the next step um, after I trim this down the rest of the way. And if you're making this completely flat with the bushings, then when you go to sand it, it's actually going to be shy of the bushings, um, which means that when we go to press the pen parts in, it, you're going to feel a ridge. And you don't want to feel that ridge. So now on this, you could see the uh, the ridges that the roughing gouge was making. It's just because it's a round tool. Uh, that's the reason why you've got these uh, ridges on here. Um, you can take a square cutter or a parting tool or something like that and run that across here and it'll clean it up. But you do take a risk with that uh, because the tool is so sharp, you could blow this apart. But I think for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and use a square. Um, carbide tool on there just to show you what you can do and it makes it a little bit easier when it comes to sanding as well. So now you can see all the ridges are out of it. So we're still about a millimeter proud off the bushings which is fine because this is a very close uh, pen blank to the actual pen tube inside, so you really want to do most of your finishing work with sanding. All right, when it comes to sanding, you can remove the tool rest or just drop it down all the way. I usually just drop it down all the way. For doing the bulk of the sanding and bringing it down, I'll use 100 grit sandpaper and also speed up the lathe a little bit. So now we have a nice 400 grit finish on here. All right, so we have this sanded down to a 400 grit. Uh, there are many finishes you can put on here. Um, you can do the CA glue, uh, you can do lacquer, you can do just a wax finish, whatever you want. Uh, I use this stuff, it's called uh, Bell N Wood Turners Finish. Uh, I get it from Penn State um, as well. It's kind of a shellac almost, but um, I think it goes on really well, and then I usually throw a coat of wax on top of it uh, as well. But it, it's a good product. So, with this, we'll turn this, uh, we'll turn the lathe back on, and then slow it down uh, real slow, and then uh, we'll apply the finish. It takes about a minute or two for the finish to dry, but so during this time, this is when I usually go to take the the actual pen uh, blank off of the off of the mandrel. All right, so now we're gonna take the 
the pen blank off of the uh, mandrel. And there you go. It's completed pen cylinder.